subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Madam President, respect for human rights is universal and paramount and applies to all countries including Pakistan. And terrorism inherently undermines the promotion and protection of human rights. Talking to CNN in February 2019, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi admitted that UN-designated terrorist and chief of Jaish e Mohammed Mazood Azhar resides in Pakistan. To BBC in March 2019, Mr Qureshi confessed that his government and Jaish e Mohammed maintained official contact. In July 2019, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan told the U.S. Institute of Peace in Washington that his country hosts 40,000 terrorists. In June 2020, Prime Minister Imran Khan referred to Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden as a martyr in the country's parliament. Last month, Pakistan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs acknowledged the presence of UN-designated terrorist Dawood Ibrahim on its territory. Madam President, there is no need to elaborate. Pakistani officials have time and again confessed the country continues to be a safe haven for terrorists and terrorist organizations. The UN Security Council's consolidated list of terrorist individuals and entities includes 146 entries from Pakistan. With all due respect, I am compelled to ask, why is Pakistan still a member of this August Council? Thank you. Pakistan is attempting to illegally make Gilgit Baltistan her fifth province. On October 31, 1947, Pakistan instigated a coup d'etat in Gilgit Agency with the collaboration of British officers of Gilgit Scouts and occupied Gilgit Agency. By attacking the state of Jammu Kashmir and Gilgit Agency, Pakistan has committed a war of aggression, crime against peace and crime against humanity, all of which tantamount to war crimes. Today we are faced with double colonization of Gilgit Baltistan as China joins Pakistan under Belt and Road Initiative. More than 100 human rights activists are languishing in prisons. For every 25 people, Pakistan has deployed one soldier in Gilgit Baltistan. Almost every single government official serving in Gilgit Baltistan is Pakistani. Our natural resources are being plundered. UN resolutions regarding Jammu Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan seem to have become obsolete, hence a new approach has become the need of the hour. Therefore, I demand that Pakistan be tried for war crimes, that, would, that the world should collectively demand withdrawal of Pakistan army from our lands, that all Belt and Road Initiative projects between Pakistan and China should be declared illegal by the United Nations. A Truth and Reconciliation Commission should be set up to investigate the 1990s genocide of Hindu pundits in Kashmir committed by Pakistan-sponsored jihadi terrorists in collaboration with local Muslim clergy. Minorities are suffering for past 73 years in Pakistan. I would like to let everyone know that a lot of Christians have left Pakistan due to fear being prosecuted by blasphemy law. They are sitting in Malaysia, uh, Malaysia Thailand, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Every year Christian, Hindu and Sikh girls are kidnapped and forced to accept Islam and marry Muslims who have kidnapped them. Madam Excellency, a 37-year-old Christian man, Asaf Parvez, refused to accept Islam and was arrested in 2013 under blasphemy law, has now been sentenced to death. A 14-year-old Hindu girl named Mehkamari was abducted on her way to school in Jacobabad and forcefully converted to Islam and married to her abductor. I request the United Nations Human Rights Council to intervene in this situation. Thousands of minority refugees are languishing all over the world. At least they should be settled in Europe, Canada, so their nightmare can be over. The enforced disappearances of Sindhi people by Pakistani agencies continue unabated. 
the last three months alone, more than 60 have been abducted and include renowned political workers, civil society activists, and human rights defenders such as Masoud Shah, Akib Chandu abducted second time, Insaf Dayo, Riyaz Khaskheli, Shahid Junejo, Intiaz Khaskheli, Kashif Tagar, and scores of others. The abducted include 15-year-old child Bashir Shar and over 70-year-old Bachal Shah, whose two sons were extrajudicially killed by the agencies not too long ago. Sadly, a tortured body of previously missing Niaz Lashari was found on 16 June. In abducting people, the security personnel from ISI, MI, Rangers and Police used terrifying force, break and ransack houses, beat, torture and humiliate occupants, including women, children and elderly. The Pakistani agencies are using enforced disappearances as a tool to spread terror, to ruthlessly silence any voice and struggle of Sindhi people against the intensifying onslaught of Pakistani state on their political, economic and human rights. Sindhi people have been raising voice through hundreds of rallies, hunger strikes, protests and petitions, but sadly all institutions in Pakistan, including the judicial system, has provided no remedy and the perpetrators continue with the impunity. In the given hopeless situation, we request the council to fulfill its responsibility to save Sindhi people from enforced disappearances by Pakistan state agencies. The perpetrators must be brought to justice, holding the Pakistani government accountable. We, the people of Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir, plead this August Council to stop Pakistan from treating us like animals. The Azad Kashmir Election Act 2020 has taken away all political, civil and constitutional rights. Our activities opposing accession to Pakistan have been declared anti-state in flagrant violation of United Nations resolutions. We are treated as traitors in our own home, simply for defending it. By declaring our political activities illegal, this act gives the Pakistani army a free hand to assassinate our people through targeted killings and enforced disappearances, Pakistan's favorite action against all those who disagree with their policies. Pakistan is brainwashing innocent youth on both sides of the border in Jammu Kashmir, making them cannon fodder in the proxy war with India. Pakistan continues to run terror camps from Azad Kashmir. In this backdrop, Pakistan is now trying to declare disputed territory of Gilgit Baltistan as its province, depriving our people of their land and their identity and culture. Pakistani revisionist moves would throw the whole world into a brutal war. Pakistan has taken our freedom. Pakistan placed their boot of tyranny on our throat, suppressing our voice. But we hope our voice shall be heard here. We beg the peace-loving world to stop what's happening to us, break away the chains, keeping us from standing free and happy. Thank you. Balochistan is suffering a severe humanitarian crisis, having been in the throes of a ruthless genocidal conflict for the past two decades. The Pakistani army-sponsored death squads are roaming with impunity. A large number of Baloch youth has been the victim of forcible disappearances and extrajudicial killings. Thousands of, of them have fled to different countries in recent years. The military establishment of Pakistan and its clandestine agencies are kidnapping, torturing and murdering activists and human rights defenders to counter the Baloch people's demand to exercise their right to self-determination. The recent killing of a student, Hayat Baloch, in Turbat testifies to that. He was brutally murdered by the Frontier Corps while his parents were forced to watch his unfortunate fate. Madam President, considering the gravity of the situation, we request this Council to put a resolution in the Council to send a fact-finding mission to Balochistan to investigate the gross violations of human rights and subsequently make these state military officials accountable for their crimes against humanity in Balochistan. Legally, Pakistan has no locus standi on Jammu and Kashmir. Yet, since the late 1980s, Pakistan's military establishment has used youth from Indian-administered Jammu and Kashmir to join its various terrorist proxies like Hizbul Mujahideen, lashkar e toiba and jaish e mohammed Rejection of India was the slogan dictated to these youth. Islamic Caliphate and merger of Jammu and Kashmir with Pakistan, the aims. Thousands of Kashmiris who did not agree were killed by these terrorist proxies.
those who subscribe to the Indian constitution were specifically targeted. Today, led by its foreign minister, Pakistan is demanding a return of the autonomy that Jammu and Kashmir had earlier enjoyed under the Indian constitution, the same constitution against which it started this proxy war in which Kashmiris were massacred. Madam President, will Pakistan be allowed to get away just like that? Even after it ruptured our social fabric, ordered the killing of thousands of my fellow Kashmiris, exploited our youth as pawns in its proxy war, and was majorly responsible for getting our autonomy diluted through unleashing its terror policy. I humbly urge this council to summon the Islamic Republic of Pakistan for an audit and hold it accountable for the destruction of my homeland. It is very unfortunate to witness incessant and insensible ranting by Pakistan on issues that are extraneous to the mandate of this council and which relate to the internal affairs of India. Pakistan's sole objective as a member of this council is to distract the attention of international community from serious human rights violations committed by it against its own people and in the Indian territories occupied by it. In these extraordinary times of pandemic, when everyone is putting on a mask for the safety and protection of fellow human beings, Pakistan, unfortunately, is using another kind of pernicious mask to masquerade as a champion of human rights that it itself violates egregiously by torturing and persecuting minorities. It is high time for this council and the international community to address the irony where a failed state like Pakistan, with no regard whatsoever for values and cultures of democracy, dares to preach an open and transparent democratic system like India. The Pakistani shenanigan of running with the hare and hunting with the hound is hard to miss. At the same time, we are observing malevolent attempts by terrorists to exploit the financial and emotional distress caused by the lockdowns to disturb the cohesiveness of societies. The increased pressure, presence of people online and on social media has been targeted by terrorists to disseminate misinformation through hate speeches, fake news and doctored videos. The intent has been to entice and establish links with vulnerable individuals and recruit them in their cutters. Terror groups have also exhorted supporters to target security forces and health workers. Another disturbing trend has been the collection of funds by proscribed terrorist outfits ostensibly for undertaking charitable activities, but which in reality would be used to finance terror. Madam President, ter terrorism is the grossest affront to the enjoyment of inalienable human right to life and to live in peace and security. It possesses a serious threat to economic and social development, undermines democracy, and jeopardizes the rule of law. It is an attack against freedom of thought, expression, and association. While acts of terrorism violate the rights of individual victims, it also deeply affects the enjoyment of a range of rights by the families of the victims and society as a whole.